So please may I come in? Yes, please do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Please take your seat. Thank you, sir. You're Mr. Ashutosh Kumar. Yes, sir. Ashutosh, uh, you got your uh, vaccine? Yes, sir. Both those? Yes, sir. Uh, since uh, board members are also vaccinated, I'll advise you to remove your mask then. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Comfortable? Absolutely, sir. Okay, so Ashutosh, uh, to begin with, please introduce yourself to board. Sir, I'm Ashutosh Kumar. Uh, I am from Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. I have done my schooling from St. Fidelis College, Lucknow. And I have done my engineering in uh, electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur. My interests are sun salutation, meditation and reading self-improvement books. You completed your graduation in which year? Sir, 2017, sir. 17? Yes, sir. What are you doing since then? Sir, I've been preparing for the civil services examination, sir. You're an IIT Kanpur graduate. Yes, sir. I can see you have mentioned a, that you got a 9.9 .9 CGPA in IIT Kanpur. Yes, sir. Which is phenomenal. Right? Sir. Have you received that gold medal from IIT Kanpur? Yes, sir. The Academic Excellence Award? Yes, sir. And you are unemployed for five years? Sir, I think that uh, this process of preparation for the civil services, I had decided way back in IIT Kanpur. So for me, it's a method of pursuing my own dream that I, and a goal that I have fixed for myself. And uh, it's a more of a perseverance on my part to try and achieve, keep on achieving that goal uh, as long as possible, sir. As long as possible. Meaning till the attempts are exhausted, sir. Do you realize that you are a IIT gold medalist? Yes, sir. 9.9 .9 CGPA electrical engineering. Yes, sir. Appearing with political science and not electrical engineering. The failure is written, I mean, on the very idea, very planning of it. If IIT Kanpur cannot give confidence to its own gold medalist to appear in their own discipline, Yes, sir. Which institution will? Sir, uh, first regarding the failures, sir, I think that uh, we have to learn from the failures and they are there to teach us a lessons and learn from them. These are mediocres, man. You are not mediocre. I trust uh, your institution. You do not trust your own institution. Sir, absolutely, I trust my institution and my decision to opt for the political science and international relation. It was more back then at 2017, like um, I had certain friends uh, and I had guidance available from the seniors. So I had decided back then itself. And also because this option would help me in other GS papers. That is why I chose for it, sir. That, that is again a mediocre reasoning. You, you, it is, uh, you've taken five years, which effectively means the reasoning is not working. But anyways, since already you're here, so to some extent it's working. Tell me, electrical engineering, obviously you're a gold medalist, so who else will uh, tell me? Tell me, we used to have DC traction. Yes, sir. And off late, uh, there are people who believe that the AC uh, is better. Yes, sir. Why this uh, change of uh, mind in the engineer's uh, perspective? Sir, I think that regarding the DC traction, sir, uh, it's starting torque issues are there. Um, like uh, in the case of the DC, the second option that uh, second issue comes in is the power supply. The most of the power supply that we have is AC, sir. So uh, the main issue that comes in is that the starting torque in the case of the DC motors becomes uh, a bit low. And so in the, that issue can be resolved if we use the induction motors that are the AC driven motors. That is why I think in my opinion, uh, this shift is coming, sir. Tell me, uh, if we stay at the electrical engineering aspect, yes, sir. can you mention three things? vis-a-vis -vis electrical uh, GTD, generation, transmission, distribution thing, yes, sir. That, are, that are affected by politics. Okay, sir. Um, sir, first in the case of the power generation, sir, there have been issues where the power purchase agreements have been cancelled by the government and this has been because of the, like they were the commitments made by the one government and the another government when it comes in the power, it does not want to honor those agreements, which it thinks are not, re uh, are not according to what it uh, committed in the public. Um, the second issue in the case of the sir, distribution sector, it comes in that the subsidies in the electricity that are provided, um, the agricultural, especially for the agriculture sector, uh, they are uh, primarily distorting this kind of uh, having negative impact on environment as well as the food production and other dimension, but still they cannot be done away with because a large water base lies with the farmers. Um, so the third issue uh, regarding this, uh, I think, uh, maybe in the transmission sector, sir, it's a kind of competition. 
that is uh, the thermal power plants they want the uh, transmission sector that uh, they want their own plant load factors to rise and for that to rise they must be given uh, more access to the thermal uh, sorry to the transmission networks on the other hand the renewable energy uh, dev uh, generators they want that they should be given the priority in the terms of green corridor building linking it with the uh, grid etc so uh, this issue kind of becomes a bit political like uh, if whatever political party what kind of support it has and what its inclinations and ideology are it can decide between the thermal or the uh, renewable energy i don't know why i have a feeling that you have taken uh, the uh, the the politics part only in a negative sense as if it's it's a bad thing you're a psir student uh, yes sir don't don't you find the politics influencing positively to the gtd issues ever sir there can be certain uh, positive aspects like uh, i should have it mentioned it um, uh, like in the first aspect if they look at the political positive dimension of the politics um a greater thrust towards enhancing the energy security for the uh, people and this in turn is uh, leading us to in increase our installed capacity in the terms of the electricity generation apart from that uh, schemes like saubhagya scheme that provide the free connection uh, to the bpl and to the poor people who do, still do not have the electricity connection um these are leading to the greater uh, access to the electricity to the people and in that sense it is improving the uh, i mean the distribution of the electricity and on the renewable side the thrust for the renewable energy it is also enhancing the clean power supply as well anyways thank you sir you're from lucknow yes sir city famous for its uh, cuisines yes sir can you cook um, no sir you would you like to learn cooking um definitely sir i would like to try it sometimes you like reading self improvement books yes sir which is your favorite author sir i've uh, read uh, by t uh, if you think you can by tj hoisington sir okay and apart from that other books that i like is the think and grow rich by napoleon hill and attitude is everything by jeff keller which is the favorite one sir my favorite one it is if you think you can sir so what are the three takeaways from that book so the first one is regarding the goal setting the goal setting should be smart that is they should be very specific and uh, very measurable goals uh, the goals that are time oriented that is they should be according to the time the second is the power of decision making that is as general uh, george patton of the usa he had remarked that a good plan implemented today it is better than a best plan that is not implemented ever or maybe implemented after a month and the third one is the power of auto suggestions that is if we continuously keep on giving the positive thoughts and uh, the self motivating thoughts it's uh, then it helps in programming our subconscious mind and it leads us to the success in our life good suppose you have to write a book on self development yes sir which area will you choose um sir i would uh, like to work on the power of thoughts sir power of thoughts yes sir good tell us something about comprehensive national power so the comprehensive national power refers to the sum total of the economic capacity of a nation like what is the kind of gdp production it refers to the defense power of the nation uh, apart from that uh, the kind of resources the nation possesses what is its standing in the global affairs and also the soft power sir okay uh, in indian context uh, maritime domains are of great importance yes sir in strategic uh, neighborhood policy yes sir what is your take on this and what are the challenges uh, as far as india is concerned sir uh, the maritime neighborhood has become important uh, is important for us this is because uh, around 80% of our energy supplies pr primarily the oil supplies they are imported uh, via the maritime sea routes apart from that uh, the other uh, issues like uh, maritime terrorism etc are rising like we could see in the 2611 attacks on the mumbai apart from that the significance of the maritime domain is rising because of the rising chinese maritime assertiveness in the indian ocean so uh, because of these challenge uh, these are the challenges that india is facing and it is because of this the maritime domain becomes important for us okay uh tell us something about what are the challenges uh, uh, in bimstech sir the first is the india's uh, image of a big brother nation and this many of the bimstech nation they do not want uh, they like kind of not like this kind of an image The second one is that many bimstech nation want the China to be a part of it as well and India does not want the bimstech to be a China centric organization. Um the third challenge in the bimstech lies in improving the uh, connectivity among the nations because these are primarily the nations like Bangladesh, Bhutan, um, Myanmar, Thailand etc. The pace of connectivity is not uh, so strong as it should be. Thank you. Thank you sir.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You said you are interested in sun salutations. Yes, ma'am. Why specifically sun salutations and not yoga in general? Ma'am, uh, I think that uh, first uh, I have done many asanas of the yoga and yoga was a part of a compulsory physical activity at IIT Kanpur as well. Uh, but uh, of late I have started preferring the sun salutation because uh, first it is a set of uh, 12 asanas which I think provide a very comprehensive set of exercise for the body and they help in improving the immunity and so that is why I have uh, decided So they to do provide that but that doesn't mean that the other asans are redundant and the, do you think that other asans are redundant in that case? Uh, no ma'am definitely not all the asanas have their own kind of the benefit and in my case I think that the Surya Namaskar for my body it is uh, comfortable it provides me a good kind of an exercise that is why I prefer the Surya Namaskar Only? Yes ma'am Okay can you tell me a little about how much is the internet penetration of uh, hum, uh, Indian population uh, roughly or uh, if you have a figure or idea about this? Ma'am, I think that uh, more than, uh, I don't know the exact, I was reading the internet penetration, I was reading about the internet penetration, it was around 27 or 28 uh, percent. Only? Uh, Ma'am, I think this report was way back in the 2017, I had read few days back in the newspaper. No, but even in 2017, I think it's a very low figure. With Jio coming, you, we observe in the society, everybody has a smartphone. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I think that is, this is more true in the urban areas. However, in the rural areas... Rural areas, areas still people don't have Yes, ma'am, still they do not have Have you time. visited any rural area recently or in past couple of years? Ma'am, in past, I think one or twice I have visited my paternal village, but uh, not very much for a long time. Okay. So, uh, energy in context of energy security, when we talk about waste to energy, yes, ma what kind of waste are we trying to get energy from? Ma'am, the first is the biomass related waste. Okay. And if the biomass related waste, it is dried off and the moisture component is removed, then uh, we can use it in the thermal power plants as well. Uh, again, like in a certain proportion, 5% or 10%. Uh, apart from that, uh, ma'am, the waste to energy plants uh, could also involve uh, like the waste, the municipal garbage, etc. that keeps on coming up. And if it can be suitably treated, then uh, I think that it can also be used for the waste to energy plants. Okay. Some of the processes involved in this conversion, can you recall? Uh, Ma'am, one of them is spirolysis, that is heating at a high temperature, which in turn leads to its conversion into the gases like yes. carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, etc. Mm -hmm. And then they can be burnt and the energy produced from it can be used to convert it into the, uh, convert the water in the, into the steam, which can be used to drive the turbines and generate the electricity. Okay. Recently, government has been discussing Dam Safety Act. Yes. Can you tell me some of its provision? Ma'am, uh, it uh, like the provisions that I am able to recall is the two institutional structures that have been proposed. Uh, one of them is the National Dam Safety Authority um, that will be responsible for laying down the policies and the guidelines for the dam safety. Um, second, there is one more committee uh, like National Committee on the Dam Safety. I am not able to recall its exact name and that will be responsible for the implementation and looking after the dams and whether those policies and guidelines are being implemented. Okay. Why the specific need? to uh, regulate dam safety. What were the earlier provisions under which this uh, regulation could be done according to you? Uh, Ma'am, earlier provisions I am not able to recall right now. Uh, but I think the specific need of the dam safety arises from the fact that India has the third largest number of the dams and mainly the large dams. And these kind of the dams, uh, they uh, many of them are more than 100 years old and so a proper institutional structure is required so that they do, uh, do not lead to any catastrophic event in the future. Okay. Uh, uh, have you, you must have come across UN, uh, UN Human Rights Charter. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And if we compare the UN Human Rights Charter and the freedom, fundamental freedoms given in India. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you tell me some of the rights which... Uh, feature there and not here and any anything any difference you can make out between the two uh, ma'am I have uh, read about it only in general exact precise difference I'm not able to recall ma'am okay are you aware of UN CLOs unclosed yes ma'am yeah so how do we uh, define well, what are the different uh, how do we define the different uh, sovereignty or well, territorial waters yes, contiguous zone EEZs can you tell me uh, quickly what are the parameters? Uh, Ma'am, from the baseline up till the 10 nautical miles, I think it is the territorial waters. And then up till the 24 nautical miles, it is the 
uh, I think contiguous zone and from uh, up till the two uh, from the territorial waters up till the 220 uh, nautical miles from the uh, this baseline it is the exclusive economic zone. Ma Are you sure about these figures? Uh, yes ma'am as far as I am able to recall ma'am. Okay. What about the depth? Ma'am depth aspect I am not aware of. You are not aware? Uh, uh, my last question. Doctrine of hot pursuit. Yes ma'am. Have you come across it? Uh, yes, ma'am. In the case of the Uri attack, uh, this kind of uh, concept was okay. introduced. What, what, what uh, do you study this in PSIR? Uh, ma'am, I've read about it in general, not okay. specifically what, in PSIR. What does it mean, actually? Uh, ma'am, it means that uh, if any case, uh, the terrorists they are pursued beyond the national boundaries, and uh, this kind of an action, this is specifically targeted against the terrorist action and the terrorist launchpad, and not against any nation's sovereignty or integrity. Does it involve terrorists? Uh, Ma'am, I had read uh, Hot Pursuit in the context of the terrorist kind of. Acha, okay. One last question then. Yes, uh, Can you define terrorism, uh, define and differentiate between terrorism, insurgency and naxalism? Ma'am, terrorism, uh, it involves the uh, kind of an, uh, it involves those kind of acts of the terror that are motivated by the political, religious or ideological purposes. Um, Naxalism, it is specifically a uh, kind of insurgency by the farmers and the tribals in, in India and uh, especially uh, those who are inspired by the Leninist and the Marxist ideology. And insurgency, it is a kind of armed rebellion against the state when the people are not satisfied. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, Achutosh. Yes. You have a CGP of 9.9. .9. What was your BTEC project? Um, sir, it was regarding the uh, patch antenna and it was a monopole antenna and what uh, I had done in the project was the miniaturization of that antenna by intro uh, introducing the Minkowski fractals in it. And so these kind of antennas, they are used in the wearable devices like the smart watches or these kind of antennas are also finding applications in uh, pacemakers that are used in the hearts and other kind of internet of thing devices. Okay. So. Did you file patent for the same? And no, sir. Why? Sir, uh, first I was not, uh, there was not so much awareness about filing the patent regarding it, uh, like I was never uh, told by my professor or advisor, so I never tried for it. You were applying for civil services since your uh, IT days, right? Um, sir, after my graduation I decided. So, suppose an uh, IT graduate doesn't know about patents. How can we make India a global, global export hub? Sir, I think definitely this kind of awareness needs to be introduced, uh, needs to be introduced in the IIT system. And uh, this structure I also found that it was lacking because many professors were also not aware of this. And in case in the lab in which I was working, I don't think uh, many uh, patents were being filed. So I think a kind of uh, government outreach and the institutional structures within IITs need to be created so that more patents are encouraged. What are the main factors behind uh, the low patent filing in the country? Um, so the first is the, as I pointed out, the low degree of awareness among the people. Um, second, it, uh, the patent related laws and the regulations, they are very cumbersome. Uh, as it was pointed out by the economic survey that it takes around 46 months to get a patent in India. However, it takes around only 20 months in the USA and the China. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think that patent related uh, issues, uh, they do not receive adequate funding support like there is a CPAM, uh, CIPAM institution, but more such kind of institution needs to come up. Ashutosh, I'm very afraid, you know, IIT graduates are not aware of patents, then how can we proceed with the technology development in the country? Um, sir, definitely, I think uh, we need to enhance the awareness regarding this. We need to, the government needs to set up institutions that handhold the graduates and uh, also the uh, professor should be incentivized uh, that if the patients... So, they, can we say that your education was largely bookish with no practical knowledge? Um, sir, uh, I would not agree with that. There were a lot of practical uh, labs that we, laboratory experiments that we used to do. Uh, in our uh, graduation course and apart from that it also involved doing the project work as, as I had pointed out. So I cannot say that it was largely bookish. But you had no interest to file patents to develop something new to boost India's economy to boost exports right? Um, sir my interest uh, like during the third and the fourth year I had started gravitating towards the idea of preparing for the civil services examination. So I was, uh, I had started reading the basic book, so I had uh, no inclination as of now. You left all the BTEC knowledge so that you can prepare for the civil services. Sir, right? I had started uh, doing the basic preparation for it, yes sir. What is the concept of Vishwaguru with regard to India? 
Um, sir, the idea of the Vishwaguru states that the India has been a leading power uh, since the times immemorial in providing the intellectual uh, leadership to the world at large. Um, we can see from the Bakshali manuscript that is uh, that provided the idea regarding the numericals. Apart from that, we can see from the Aryabhat's work regarding the uh, solar eclipse, the calculation of the value of pi, etc. Um, we can see in the Ras Ratnakar uh, the in the present times. Forget about the past. In the present times, what are the requirements for the country to become Vishwaguru? Um, sir, for becoming the Vishwaguru, I think uh, there we need to start from the grassroots level. The first has to be the strengthening the education concept, uh, education infrastructure in our country. Um, this in turn will lead to the greater literacy rates in our country. Then secondly, uh, as we reach to the uh, towards the research institutions, um, there has to be a greater focus on the filing the patents. There has to be a greater focus on promoting the grassroots level research. Okay, fine. A last question. Like in the electrical engineering, yes, sir. what new challenges are coming up for the engineers to make India competitive with uh, respect to China? Um, sir, I think that uh, if you look in the terms of the electric vehicles and if you look especially in the context of the lithium ion batteries, since we all know that the lithium is a scarce resource. So uh, there is a need to come up with alternative battery and the energy storage uh, that can give thrust to the electric vehicles, uh, which in turn will lead to the job creation, environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, recently, there was the news that the Reliance company is looking for the creation of the batteries with the sodium ion um, because the sodium is abundant in the oceans. And there was a Scottish company that has certain patents regarding it. So these kind of challenges are coming up. Good uh, technologies are needed in this regard. Fine. Thank you. So Ashutosh. Yes, sir. What is the law which actually regulates the number of pages, the width of pages, the content. Can it so happen that are yaar, Sunday hai, today is Sunday, so why don't we publish 200 pages newspaper? People will read. Is there any law? Sir, I am not aware of the exact laws, but uh, I think the Press Council of India would have its regulation, but this is just a guess. I am not aware just of it. Just a guess. And the guess is very far off. No, absolutely no. Okay, sir. It has got nothing to do with Press Council of India. Anyways, going further. Do you have a bank account? Yes, sir. I presume it will be a savings account? Yes, sir. Uh, is it also right to presume that it's in a nationalized bank? Yes, sir. Perfect. Whatever X amount of money which you have in your savings account, Yes, sir. In which part of the money aggregate will it fall under? Will it fall under M0, M1, M2, M3, M4? Um, sir, the money in the bank account would fall under uh, M3. Would you say money in the bank account? I'm being specific here. It's not term deposits. I'm talking about savings Savings account. deposit, yes, sir. M3, you said? Yes, sir. M3. And M1 as well, sir. M1 as well. So, which is more liquid amongst the two? Sir, the more liquid one uh, would be the M1. M1, okay. And which is considered as broad money? Sir, M3 is the broad and money. And why is that so? Um, sir, what is I so broad about it? Sir, it also includes the time deposits that they are in the banks. Okay. Excellent, uh, Ashutosh. Please tell me, there is a confusion in terms of terminologies in your political science. Yes, sir. The argument is, liberalism is actually neoliberalism and neoliberalism is actually liberalism. Okay, sir. What, what sense do you make out of this? Um, sir, uh, with the first part of the statement that liberalism is actually the neoliberalism. So the idea is that uh, the classical liberalism, as it was talked about, it was in the negative sense of the liberty, that is the freedom to the people. And it was not in the context of the positive liberty that talks about the welfare oriented approach. And then uh, incidentally, the new realism also had that same kind of the market fundamentalism. And we're in the lot of private sector. Which one promotes state intervention? Which one says hands off? Um, sir, the positive liberalism, it promotes the state intervention and the welfare state and it evolved after the 1930 economic depression. And the classical liberalism and neoliberalism both uh, talk about a night watchman state and a hands-off approach. Absolutely. So if the FDI in insurance sector is, let's say, increased from 49% to 74%, then who will actually favor it? Whether liberals will be happy or neoliberals? Um, sir, the neoliberals would be happy, sir. And Ashutosh, please... You know, try to make sense out of this. Why in the, why in the world do we read in newspapers 74% FDI? What is so magical? About, why not 75? What is the 74? Why are they leaving out 26%? Um, sir, I think this 26% is left out that uh, certain, like in the case of FDI, if, 20, if only 74% of FDI is allowed, then the 26% will have to be either owned by the Indian person or an Indian national. Excellent. What is the consequence of that? 
the consequence is that uh, there would be some sort of a indian ownership in whatever uh, acts or whatever kind of development that company is involved in and uh, at least most of the majority de discussions or uh, decisions in companies act requires 75% yes sir so if you are 74% you are short of 1 1% so right? at least so the consent the of the indian absolutely, stakeholder would be absolutely absolutely ashutosh you come from uttar pradesh yes sir have you heard of gulabi gang um sir i have heard it in the general sense was it there in the movie i think there was a, there was a movie also made apparently but anyways let's say uh, uttar pradesh because of its territorial Uh, strength as well as in terms of population yes sir intends to be di di divided into three parts or four parts what is the constitutional process for the same um sir it would require an amendment uh, sorry uh, a law that has to be passed by the parliament under article 3 of the constitution what will be the role of state legislative assembly of uttar pradesh so the state legislative assembly uh, if uh, will have to send a resolution within a specified period of the time it will have to pass this kind of a resolution and then parliament can consider it pass the resolution is it necessary for the state legislative assembly of Uttar Pradesh to pass it, um, sir. Uh, like this proposal, or president can just seek reference. Yes, sir. Uh, that is the term. The president will just send it for the reference of the state, and whether the state accepts it or not, the idea, uh, the view of the state would be inconsequential. So, in that note, Ashutosh, would it not actually thwart federalism completely? Um, sir, uh, if Parliament decides to proceed this and uh, against the opinion of the state uh, government uh, and state legislature, sorry, then definitely it would be against the spirit of the federalism. But then the Parliament would be would be having its own reasons for it, and uh, it would have kept certain national interest in the mind. And That's so a rebuttable presumption, anyways. Thank you. Okay, Ashutosh. Yes. Ashutosh, uh, if I look at uh, Uh, the kind of hobbies and interests you have announced in your dad yes sir uh, be it uh, surya namaskar or uh, things like meditation self improvement books it appears that you are more of a inward looking individual less of a uh, social and uh, outward looking uh, team player am i right in presuming that um sir i think that hobbies are more uh, that i have been pursuing in the last 5 years uh, since i have been preparing for the civil services um, but i don't think that i am a completely inward looking and not a team player we used to have a lot of team projects at iit kanpur as well and i used to actively participate despite in uh, so many efforts by iit kanpur uh, you remained what you were that's my uh, that's my fear I, i i hope i'm wrong but tell me am i wrong i am wrong Um, sir, I think that uh, being a uh, an introvert and uh, being a team player are two different things. An introvert is a person who does not even want to interact with other people. That this fundamental quest is even not there to go out and interact. A team player is a person who works with everyone, tries to build con uh, sort of consensus, tries to motivate the team, and then act uh, accordingly uh, along with the team to achieve the desired goal. So I think that I possess those kind of the qualities that I can in, I want to interact with other people and if I am working in a team then definitely I would like to motivate everyone and uh, try Apart to bring Apart from the project tell me three things in your life you have done which proves that you are more of a team player Um sir the first aspect uh, that I would like to tell about is that I used to occasionally like in my colony where I live I used to occasionally try to organize the holy milan samaros that used to be there and like in the organization part i used to mainly uh, during my childhood um, i used to work with the other children who were there in my colonies and then we used to decide what kind of cultural program we would be not obviously the organizing aspect um as of now sir i am able to recall only this incident fine ashutosh nice uh, talking to you your interview is over you can go now thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am Take a seat, Ashutosh. Okay, thank you, sir. Ashutosh, your interview is on tenth of May. Yes, sir. right. And it is going to be your first uh, attempt at the interview. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, you are happy with your performance, or there are? Uh, will you be wearing the same suit and uh, dress? Yes, sir. Can you just stand up? I'm sorry. Can you just stand up and? Yes, sir. No. Do you have a better fitted suit? I mean, the color and all is fine. Okay, sir. but uh, it looks i'm not saying that it is but it looks like as if you borrowed from your elder brother okay sir this uh, especially this uh, shoulder thing okay sir uh, either get it fitted or get a new one you still have time plenty of time right uh, look at the video carefully why i'm saying so it is it, right now it appears as if jyada bade hone se kya hota shoulder aise niche tapke hue lagte hain okay sir uh, which is not a sign of a confident person but here 
I'm just suggesting, but uh, you, you want to take call, but it is looking like this. And it was, in fact, suggested by colleagues also. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, you're happy with your performance or there are areas you believe need to work? Sir, I think that uh, I should have worked regarding the IIT background. I should have prepared it window, even in a better way, sir. See, there are few things you can't do much about. I mean, obviously, as a student, you will strive to get good marks. Yes, sir. And uh, good marks cannot be punished, right? But that that's what was happening here. The idea was... One, to intimidate you okay, uh, to some extent and also to see how do you react to it. Uh, and also, uh, in a sense, obviously, it can be a genuine query there as well. Yes. I mean, you, you are a kind of a candidate who will be expected to be in academics or in engineering. Why are you coming here? But this is uh, it's an off-the-shelf question. I don't give much importance to these uh, it, these days because most of the candidates already prepare for it. So, uh, even for, for them, they ask it for the sake of asking it, but they know the Candidates already prepared for it and the answer being delivered is the prepared answer. So don't worry about it. But yes, you need to have, have a better defense than you were giving. This is one thing. Uh, same applies to the patent thing. I mean, it dragged a bit, but uh, I mean, uh, it makes sense that you prepare that aspect also. Right? Uh, coming to specifics, your entry is good. Sitting posture, uh, generally uh, good. Voice level, uh, vo verbal communication is wonderful actually. Okay. Your flow is wonderful. Voice clarity is there. And uh, uh, speed sometimes appears a little faster at a few places, but uh, it's not hampering the communication uh, in general, right? So the voice clarity and uh, the verbal communication definitely was very good. Uh, uh, eye contact was also good, right? So overall on the communication front, you're doing most things right. Uh, coming to uh, the content part, uh, on most topics, most areas, it appears that you have prepared. Okay, there so were a few areas though where it appears that uh, maybe a little brush up is required, right? Uh, and uh, a slight suggestion that when you are kind of uh, claiming to know certain thing, then you need to be very sure, especially if we are talking about the factual aspect, right? When you were discussing with the ma'am and ma'am actually yes. asked, are you sure? And uh, I'm told that it was uh, not the right. Uh, yes, sir. So get the. Uh, it's it. You can be wrong. There's no problem in being wrong. But just if you believe the board member is insisting, then leave that window of you being wrong a bit. Okay, right? sir. That will be a better way of saying it. Okay, sir. Other things in general good. Polity maybe a little revision is required, but you have plenty of time. So in any case, you'll be revising. What else you'll do? Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> so so prepare a bit. Otherwise, uh, on the communication front and on the uh, attitude and all, all things are good. Okay, the so last question which we were getting into the discussion about uh, you being uh, inward looking, uh, you handled it well. Again, it was an odd idea to uh, corner you a bit, but you were able to handle it well. Though it makes sense to uh, just think of a few things uh, in okay, your mind. So. Uh, you are ready with uh, coming up with the, um, uh, the better defense. Other things, uh, overall good. You Overall, your uh, endeavor should be that you should not appear a very textbookish, bookish person. Okay, sir. Your personality should appear to be open, inviting personality rather than somebody who is like uh, um, giving 10 hours a day uh, to books only. That, that should, uh, um, overall personality. That part is already tested. You have drawn benefits out of it. That's why you're here. Yes, so now no, leave it for, them for a while and just think for 30 minutes it should appear that you're an open person. You, you like to interact and you're enjoying the conversation. Okay, sir. Right? All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.